I read your letters that come in the mail, most of them handwritten, which is sometimes I sit and I think to myself, if you want to know a little bit about where I'm coming from, sometimes I read your letters and I think I'm so unworthy to sit and read what comes out of your heart, what comes out of people who've committed for years, who have committed their way. That's the way I look at the letters that come to me. I don't think, oh, people, I'm a fan, celebrity, people are, I, I think these are treasures. For someone to sit down and take the time to write, there isn't a week that doesn't go by, I don't get my mail, that I don't read the letters that are, that are given to me. I say that carefully because uh, you know what happens with people that want to call and give you uh, advice on how to do something better. It's a tough enough place in the ministry. I don't need uh, constructive criticism. Dr. Scott didn't tolerate it, neither will I. But your letters of encouragement, I'll sit sometimes and I'll think I'm not, you know, I don't even know how to express the feeling sometimes. I'm overwhelmed by reading what you share with me. And I see that as a privilege. I see the privilege for me to be able to sit down and prepare for a message which starts usually Sunday evening and I'll go the whole week. This isn't, you know, I don't just sit down and I'll do a little, little bit here and I'll talk about this. I'm combing through and I'm combing through. And I really believe it's, it's through the Word we become enriched, our understanding grows. And so many things that I have thought over the years, I, I want to say this, I'm finding so crystal clear to articulate out of God's Word. So everything matters. And I think if I could just communicate that to those people who think, what does it matter and what's the point? I confess to you, I've, that's come out of my mouth many times. And not recognizing the devil really would like for me to keep echoing that. What's the point? You know, I've had people say, well, you keep, keep going at this and it seems like you know, people are, are not necessarily moving forward with you. Well, the point is that God has the people that he wants to move forward. Gideon started with a great band of people and God whittled it down to 300. And if that's what it takes to win the battle of faith, and that's God's way and that's God's plan, count me in. I'm not wanting to bring the barnacles that God wanted to get rid of a long time ago that I was saying, oh no, Lord, please. But I want you to understand everything. The prayer requests, the people that are here answering the phones, those people that are answering the phones when no one else is here, the two or three that come overnight faithfully at their post. That's what matters to God. Now, you, you can go to some other ministry and maybe they have some other things for you. This is what we do here. There is nothing small. As I said, a letter coming to me, that's big in my eyes. That's big that somebody sat down. They took the time to sit down and write. And I take the time to sit down and read and think, wow. Or the honor of studying, the honor of taking prayers before God. Very easy to say, what's the point? What is it? I'm, not, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing the fruits of any labor here. Well, who said that, you know, what do you think? God's garden is like a chia pet? And you just, you know, put a little water there and watch it grow? Some things take time. And we're dealing with God's promises. And we know that God's promises can be far away in the distance. I always come back to this because it's the one that says, Stop in your tracks and quit thinking that God will do automatically. We have to act. We begin doing what God tells us to do. Abraham, arise, lift up, now walk. Lift up thine eyes, walk. Get up and walk. You can't see the land just yet, but you get up and you start walking. And that's what I'm saying right now. You may not see and I may not see, but who says we have to see anything immediately? For Abraham, Abram, Abraham. 25 years just for one promise. Another promise, he says, is 400 years away. Have you waited 400 years yet? <laughs> Might seem like it to you. 
So you can always quit. You can always back out. Those, that's the easy thing to do. The greater challenge is recognizing God called you. And if you are indeed reduced down to a fingernail grip, you keep holding on. You keep pressing forward. You start inundating your house with the Word of God. You read the Word. You have somebody, if you don't feel like reading, you have somebody read the Word to you. If you don't feel like having somebody read to you, turn on your TV or turn on your internet, turn on your radio. If it's just for five minutes, and that five minutes may turn into 10, 15, 20, and suddenly, as you start getting back into the Word and you start realizing God definitely does have a purpose and a plan, the small things matter. And all of the small things add up. And there's a paradox. The small things count in God's eyes, and the flip side on, on the evil or the minus is the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's always the little things that God will take notice of, though. A willing heart, someone who's willing to make a commitment when nobody else wants to go, Lord, send me. Well, what a stupid prayer. See what your prayer got you into? Or maybe got you out of, and you just don't see it yet. So I need your reservations. This is, this is the front lines right here. This is where you talk to me the most, the letters I treasure. All of the phone calls that come in, I treasure them too. Anything that happens here is a treasure to me. Right now, the greatest treasure is you getting on the phone, making your commitment to be here next Sunday, and doing it early in the week so I'm not in the middle of the week saying, does this matter? Because you see, I have to practice the message. I have to take the message too. And the reality is that sometimes the devil uses you as a weapon against me, and you're not even recognizing that. Forgive me for saying that. I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but some of you indeed become the tools, the equipment that Satan uses in your lack of faithfulness. This was Dr. Scott's lament. Don't think this is unique to me. He sat in the festival or on the pulpit uh, making the same complaint, and I see it over and over again. Same issues, same, same spirit, same things need to be addressed. Start right now. I want the reservations and your commitments. Don't let Satan steal this moment in time, because some of you are saying, I know she's right, but you're still going to sit there. Don't let Satan rob you of this moment in time where you just, you single-handedly pick up the phone and say, I am going to put the brakes on whatever's been going on. God is first. This is how I'm going to put it on display. I'm making my reservation right now. Get on the telephone. Yeah.